Good evening, girls and girls. No boys allowed. Welcome to the grand finale of Metroid Month. Ah, Metroid! Last we left off, I played two shitty fan-made Metroid ROM hacks, but there's still one more fan game I think that I need to review. So the final Metroid fan game we're going to be talking about to cloak fuck off, titled Another Metroid 2 Remake, or AM2R for short. This bizarre nomenclature is attributed to that at the time, nearly 10 years ago, everyone was developing some variation of a remake for Metroid 2 Return of Samus, which seems appropriate as it's the least talked about and most primitive of the original trilogy. So that left a lot of room for aspiring game developers to expand and draw upon the canvas that was Metroid 2, in very similar fashion to what Zero Mission did for the original Metroid. Some of these fan games had some real potential, most noteworthy being uh, Metroid SR388, another one I was following that I don't think had a title, and of course, AM2R. The former two were scrapped, never to see the light of day, but the third was completed in 2016, after years and years of development, to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the series. Maybe this one will be the diamond of the rough that changes my mind on Metroid ROM hacks. Alright, let's get started. This is interesting. game. It's perfect. Perfect! This is the Metroid game fans have been waiting for, and it was made by how many guys? One guy? One guy with some friends? One guy made a better Metroid game than it took an entire team of professionals to shit out a steaming turd? I have no words. I have no words except these. Fuck! Shit! It's no wonder Nintendo shut it down, it was the wake-up call they needed. Hey guys, better hop on the stick and make a proper Metroid game or we'll do it for you and put it out for free. I gotta talk about this in further depth. Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. I fucking love this game. It's almost as if it was made especially for me. The intro cinematic shows the Federation meeting in a shadowy room, but look closely at the three figures in center. They're silhouettes modeled after the Federation brass from the original Metroid instruction booklet. That is some deep shit right there, and this game is full of nods and references like that. What I love about this game, other than everything, is that it truly does celebrate the tenure of the Metroid series. Not just the original, but all of them. It does this through subtle nuances and references that only a true Metroid fan would understand. You can draw pickups with your charge beam, just like in Metroid Prime. The musical tracks in each of the areas are actually remixes and sometimes entirely new arrangements of classic Metroid tracks like Lower Norfair. even one of my all-time favorite tracks, Green Brinstar. Now what's awesome about this is that when you enter the Metroid breeding area, the mood changes to tense and even a little scary, but the music retains the same track, but might put it in a minor key or emphasize certain other instruments in the arrangement. You may not have noticed this, but I did. And that's what I'm trying to say here, is that this game is highly self-referential in its stylings and gameplay, but it does so without being so obvious that it's like, ooh, look at me, I remind you of another thing. Nah, hell, even specific parts in the musical tracks are added as a reference to completely different other tracks. You hear that? Does it sound familiar? Right, it's the same reverb-drenched snare fill from Talon Overworld. You may not have noticed it, but I did because I spent a whole goddamn fucking month mixing my own fucking cover of it. And the bosses? 
Oh, the bosses. Remember Arachnus from the original game? No, didn't think so. Because here, he's shooting fireballs, going ape shit, and then he rolls into a fucking ball and you have to bomb the floor. So he bounces onto electric coils. One of my favorite areas from the original game, the second place, for lack of a better word, has been souped up to be a hydro station, and that's not all. The rest of the area has got some love too. What I always referred to as the ancient city in my playthroughs of the game is now the tower. When you first enter, everything's powered down until you turn the lights back on and it turns into a weapons testing facility. Yeah, so now you have to avoid all litany of robots trying to fry and zap your ass, then you fight a mini boss that shoots missiles and shit everywhere and platforms are falling down and you have to keep fucking shooting him? After you take care of your shit in the upper levels, you go down an elevator into a power plant, get the power bombs, and just blow shit up! Then the reactor overloads and you have to escape before it blows, but right as you're escaping, a giant fucking tank robot comes out! In the hydro station, you go down to the bottom of the lake and blow up a section of the wall, and the lake drains! Look at the detail that goes into these areas! Check out these bitchin' Chozo statues. It's two giant fucking Chozos holding a cauldron. In the last area, right before you enter the Queen's Lair, you can see cool pyramidal structures in the background. Super cool. And that gunship looks a little too close to a penis. What's so incredible about this game is that it took liberties, but it executed it in such a way that it doesn't feel contrived. Turning Area 5 into a distribution center? Why not? Putting in Ceres as a mini-boss? Why not? Helps explain why the Federation got a hold of one on BSL, its native fauna to SR388. They even added logbook entries to expand upon the lore. You see? What was missing from Metroid 2? A map, some story elements, varied musical tracks and gameplay elements? Well, fucking put some of that shit in! Why the hell not? We got a lot we can do with this! I'm feeling some kind of strange sensation. I'm not used to it on this show, but I think it might be, uh, a fun? Fuck, man. This game's got me gushing like a goddamn schoolgirl. I gotta find something to complain about. The Omega Metroids are kind of tedious, but that's it. If anything, I might give this game a 10 out of 10. I think all the other games to get that rating are Super Metroid. And that's it! Even KOTOR 2 and Mass Effect 2 have flaws. For example, Mass Effect 2 has a very tasteful love scene, but no penetration. This is the incredibly rare instance of a remake surpassing its original, just like Zero Mission. You could argue that you can't compare the two because Metroid 86 and Metroid Zero Mission are so different, and I will agree with that, but AM2R is better than Metroid 2. That one sucks. It sucks, but I like it because it forces me to use my imagination and reminds me of when I was a kid and there were only three Metroid games. And when I'm playing this game, what I see is that same mentality from the developers, applying imagination to fill out the world, and it's exciting and inspiring to see. As you progress towards the eradication of the Metroid Menace on SR388, you get to see how they're evolving. Some of the alphas are in a mid-stage where they've started sprouting appendages but aren't quite molted to gamma stage yet. They even actively dodge your missile blasts. And the great thing about not just the Metroid battles, but all of the boss battles, is that you ain't fucking waiting around for shit to happen. This is precisely what I was looking for with this video. The graphics are superb, the music remixes classic Metroid tracks into new styles and arrangements, the sound effects kick ass, the areas are Expanded, the bosses are awesome, and the controls, the controls are so smooth, you must be a limousine! Shit, man. Hire Dr. M64. Don't punish him. Get him on your payroll. Put him up in a fucking Bellevue penthouse with all the rich other tech yuppies in Seattle. Shit, man. What we've learned this year is that making a Metroid game is not easy, but Dr. M64 didn't. He did it with flying fucking colors, bro. The way that it's designed and arranged feels familiar, yet new. My instincts as a Metroid veteran feel natural here. I don't feel like I have to comb the entirety of the map just to find the one nook I didn't look at which has the power-up I need. I'm organically inclined towards certain actions, areas, methods of exploration that I haven't felt since I played an actual Metroid game. The ending boss battle with the Metroid Queen is superb. Instead of remaining stationary the entire time, she shoots fireballs and chases you down the caverns. It's fucking great! And then, as the last Metroid egg hatches, and you hear that distinctive old tune of intertwining melodies, retooled in an 80s oriental style synth patch, and gaze at the beauty of SR388's nighttime landscape, you realize that you haven't played a simple fan game, you've played a true Metroid game. Familiar yet new, nostalgic yet contemporary, 
This game is everything it set out to be and more. I guess why this game has enamored me so is because I can see the love and care and dedication that Dr. M64's small development team has for the Metroid series and them wanting to share that with the world. That's how I've always felt. I mean, I've invested a lot of time, energy, money, resources into sharing my love of the series to the whole world, basically. And my aim with any Metroid month is to introduce it to someone who may not have even ever heard of it in the first place, because if enough people show an interest in it, then maybe, just maybe, Nintendo will actually put out a proper Metroid game. But for now, I'm pretty damn satisfied with the job that Dr. M64 has done, so as far as I'm concerned, this is our new Metroid game, and a damn fine one it is at that. Boy, what a crazy Metroid month it was this year, I'll tell you what. Pretty impressive what some dudes are capable of, and hey, even though I may not have liked all of the fan output, that doesn't change the fact that these independent developers should be praised and celebrated for keeping the Metroid flame burning, even if it may be technically unethical. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's illegal for me to even own these games, especially the ones on the Super Nintendo carts that I paid 40 fucking hard-earned dollars on. What are they gonna do? Are they gonna track my debit card charge to my address on Luna and send bounty hunters after me? <laughs> oh man. Why do you always have to implicate that? You remember how last time you made a statement like that, Peanut Butter Gamer came and tried to kill you? No. Oh. Well, he did. Eve, if you've garnered anything from your time as my operating system secretary and occasional booty call, it should be that I'm not easy to kill and I can handle myself pretty well, too. I mean, let me put it this way. Do you really think that anyone is too terribly concerned that a 17-year-old kid on the moon paid $40 for a reproduction cartridge of an unofficial Metroid game? <sighs> Come on, now let's go get some burgers to celebrate the end of Metroid month. Ha! <laughs> can finally start putting on weight again. Yeah. Moshi. Hey. Now which of these jackets goes better with my outfit? Goddamn power core. Cheap low income housing. Eve, give me the number for management in the Mandarin dictionary, specifically the part with the swear words in it. Oh shit! It's the landlady! Rent check went through. She long's gonna be pissed. She long? Try Yakuza! Chip, you donkey, you did it again! They sent the Japanese mafia for you this time! Shut up, even let me think. We need to come up with an escape plan. We climb out the window. Climb out the window? That's about a 50 foot drop, and you're wearing three inch heels. Three and a half. These are my shit kicking boots. Well, you're about to die with your boots on if you don't find a way out of this mess. I got it! Everybody knows that Japanese can't resist the sounds of shred guitar. They need it. They have to have it. It's like a vitamin. They do? It's time to put this rig of doom to use. Sayonara, suckers!
idiot! You did it again! The dome's going to collapse! Why is it that you can't be anywhere for more than five minutes without blowing something up? Well, I'm sorry. I guess I just don't know my own strength sometimes. But this happens every time. You haven't learned by now? I don't have time to dispute this with you, Eve. This dome's about to crack like an egg, and this could be our one chance of getting off this rock. So burn yourself onto a floppy disk, and we're going to head planet side. They can't deny us entry if it's for asylum. They can't if you're the one responsible for your country's destruction. Extraneous. Eject. Oh, oh, oh wait, Mom. Yeah. All right. We're going back to Earth, baby. Make sure you pack the rig. <laughs>